So welcome to the September market update, property market update. A little bit late on this one because there's been so much going on in the market and I've been recording videos and pushing this one back a little bit. But in this video, we're gonna be discussing what's been going on in the property market, in the property world. We've got loads going on at the moment with things like heading towards a recession. I'm not gonna to talk too much about that because I've done lots of videos on that. We're gonna, but we're gonna be talking about rents, house prices, of course. We're gonna be talking about rents, about mortgages. We've got a few things we're gonna cover. Let's double check, I've got the bits off so you know what to stay on for. What we'll do along the bottom as well is put in some timestamps for the people that wanna to rush to the parts they wanna see. But we're gonna be talking about mortgages. We're gonna be talking about rents. We're going to be talking about the market in general. So before we talk about all that, what I'd like you to do is really helps this channel is hit that like button, massively helps the algorithms and massively helps my mission. So let's get into the September property market update. So let's start with prices. We're in the property game. Let's start with property prices. The massive headlines out there at the moment, property prices fall for the first time, etc., and things like this. So if you go onto Rightmove, Rightmove says that there's been a minus 1.3% decline in the market, first monthly price fall of the year, but on par with average August drop over the past 10 years. But Right move. One thing with right move is right move bases their data off of for sale asking prices, not based off of actually sold data. So this headline is a little bit more sensationalized than yeah, it's just not as accurate. But that said, when you scrape together your information about house prices, what you want to do is go to multiple platforms because everyone slightly gets a different way of collecting that data. As I said, right move will collect the data from asking prices. The main ones is Halifax. Uh, price index, na nationwide price index, and obviously the Office of NASA Statistics and Land Registry, them indexes, but they can be slow and some of the information don't collide. Obviously Halifax loses a lot of information, the nationwide from mortgage applications and stuff they've got on, on, on patch. But again, let's look at this. If you go across the Halifax headlines and it says, look, average house price hedges higher, but rates uh, rate of annual growth slows. So Halifax is saying there was a plus 0.4% increase the average house price has now gone up to 294260 so uh the quarterly change is 2.6 and the annual change is still the and like the yearly change annual change is still plus 11.5 which is absolutely phenomenal growth still so what is going on with the market at the moment at the moment obviously we are seeing a bit of a calling but is this down to the normal seasonal like everybody's on holiday in august people are off of schools parents don't really want to move everybody goes switches off from moving mode so you always get a quiet period even with network events some of the property network events like pin actually shut down in the because they're just so quiet. But when you look at it on the grand scheme of things, we've been in a crazy time with this pandemic. If you look pre-pandemic, the demand is still 20% higher than pre-pandemic. And supply is still 39% lower than pre-pandemic, like 2019. So when we're in a normal market, we've been in the two and a half years of a really, really crazy market. So judging it from last year and where we was the year before is not really a great judge. What we want to judge it from is when we're in a bit more of a norm, normal time kind of thing. So yeah, we're still got super demand. The demand is calling without question of a doubt, but it's going down to a simmer rather than going to a freeze or a complete cold market. But now let's have a look at the rents. Obviously it's important as landlords to understand what's going on in the rental market. And in an article in Letting Agent Today, it says rent rises lag far behind inflation, uh, according to new government figures. And the reality is, even though rents are massively going up at the moment, they, they've always lagged behind actual uh, in like, I've always act, lagged behind actual inflation and house price growth inflation. And this is why it's made, that's why I'm a remote property investor. I invest in the North because the house prices, are, the rents are still in line with the house prices. In London, even though the prices went up for a long period of time, although London's been the worst performing area in the UK, the price has been going up for a long time, but the rents didn't follow that. They did go up, but didn't follow that, you know? So this is why I still feel it's really exciting at the moment, the last chance opportunity to buy property in the North. And you can do all this from your phone today with the tech you got but we'll talk a bit more about that later on make sure you hang around to the end because i've got a free workshop that you can join me where i'll show you how to do that but let's get back into this with the rents 
But rents, according to this article in Letting Agent Today, rents have seen the highest jump since records began in 2016, according to the Office of National Statistics, which obviously is a big one to get your statistics from. It says the UK-wide rents rose an average 3.2% in the 12 months of July, uh, uh, broke, broken down by the UK national. Scotland saw the largest rise at 3.7%, while England saw a 3.2% increase and Wales a 2.1% hike. So rents are really, really going up. And the reason behind this is you've got a lot of landlords exiting the market. Another study shows there's 49% less available properties over the last two years on 49% is massive. Over half the properties have come out of the family rental sector. And there's a number of reasons. The regulations, the, the tax that's coming in, old landlords have been tired and not been bothered to do that. So one in three landlords selling up at the moment, that property is exiting the market completely. But also, what a lot of landlords have done is have shifted it to service accommodation because it don't get hit by the Section 24 tax. So if you've got a property owned in your own name and you rent it out, if you're a high rate taxpayer, you're going to pay 40% on the turnover of that income. So a quick example of that is at the moment, if you've got a property that rent for a thousand pound and you was paying 20% tax on that, even 40% tax and the mortgage was 500 pound, you'd pay 40% or 20% on the 500 pound profit, which would be, this what my wife's at, 100 quid, 200 pound where if you go into section 24 and you're a high rate taxpayer you're going to then pay 40 percent on the turnover of the thousand pound so you can pay 400 pounds so your tax bill is going up dramatically this is why a lot of people are getting out from this but service accommodation is uh is is not a, is, is is immune from this you don't it doesn't matter you're allowed to still offset your offset offset your rates with that so a lot of people have either rented their properties out to rent to rent operators or run them as a service accommodation or they're turning into service accommodation itself putting a massive pressure on rents and the prices are, are going up we're massively experiencing this in our area at the moment prices going up it says for every one applicant that's trying to apply for every one property available is 11 applicants on average across the uk at the moment which is absolutely bonkers so we have a strong uh, rental market. Let's have a look at what's happening with the mortgage. Obviously, we've had inflation. I've done a video on inflation here, so you can watch a little bit more around that. But inflation is going up. Base, base rates have been going up. And as a result, obviously, cost of mortgages are going up. So let's have a little look around how this is affecting us as, as, uh, as investors. Funny enough, the 10-year fixes are not affected that much, especially as home buyers. Uh, you still can get 10-year fixes as a buy-to-let. There's a few lenders out there. Uh, but the base rate has gone up to 0.75%. As I said, I've done a video on this. So I won't go into too much depth here on that. But according to Mortgage Strategy, he's saying the average rate across uh, all major fix r rose this week. And it said for a two-year fix, the prices increased by six basis points to around a 4.9%. That's what you're going to get on average. Uh, Three-year fix average gain 9%, so that's 4.55%. The average rate of a five-year fix rose uh, five basis points to 4.24%, while the 10-year saw... Uh, a change for the first time in, in weeks, just ticking one point basis percentage, so 4.20, so it only changed one, one base point. But on a two year fix, the most eye catching rise uh, here took place at a 90% loan to value for home buyers, it's not for investors, at a seven base point increase, so it took it to 4.15%. So, but look, at the moment, even around this, look, we've all been spoiled over the last decade, ridiculously low rates. That is still cheap borrowing and still reasonably priced borrowing. But what's going to happen with the market, as I said, I'm not going to talk too much, as I said, there's a video on this, but we're going to get another raise this week. So at time recording this, the raise hasn't come in. By time of releasing it, it might have come in. So it looks like not, not, we're not going to get another raise, but it's going to be reviewed again on the 15th of September. And all signs show it's going to raise again because of inflation. Inflation is running out of control. Done a video on inflation here, so I'm not going to talk too much on that. But inflation is still pushing on the government are still trying to battle that and when you look on home track it says here look the extra income as a first time buyer needed to buy a home is 12k at the moment so that is definitely going to put a bit more of a pressure on on the homes and stock and supply and they say that higher mortgage rates increase the monthly cost of repayments for all new home buyers first time buyers are the most affected group and it's showing on here basically if 
if you move a 2% mortgage rate to 4% means the first time buyer will need an extra £12,250 income uh, compared to when the rates were lower. In London, the highest value market, this increased to over £34,000, uh, an increase over £34,000. 34,500, the increase is less than 6,000 pound in markets where prices are lower. And you can see off this chart here, that it shows you the gross income buying at 2% mortgage. It shows you the little like lines there, gross uh, to rent, uh, income needed to rent and the gross income needed at 4% mortgage. And look, London, you, you need like 100K plus, you need six figures income to be able to really be getting away and buying at 4% mortgages. So is this gonna slow things down? Of course, when you look at the income chart, only around 5% of the UK salary people are above 75K income. So this is just gonna put more slow down and more breaks on London, in my opinion. But I talked about holiday lex, and one of the reasons uh, there's a lot of exodus from normal rental properties is because a lot of people turn them into holiday lex. One, the income can be higher, and number two, the tax is more kinder, especially when it's in your personal name. And according to this article in landlordnews.co.uk, new research has come out revealing that the number of active holiday lets have increased by as much as 33% in some of the UK's most popular short break destinations. As I said, the combination of landlords completely selling up and these properties exiting the market completely from the rental sector and a combination of people switching their properties into SA has really, really put a pressure on the normal rental market. And then to top it off last month, we had a new prime minister. That's why I've done, if you watch my video here, you'll see I've done a video around this and what her policies look like for the property market. At the moment, she seems pretty positive. She's talking about ground up development, cutting taxes, incentivizing people to grow, which I think is a great idea. Is it gonna be a great vote winner for her? I'm not sure. Will she execute on these as it comes more close to election? Who knows? What politicians say and what they execute on is very, very two different things. But for me, the noises she made so far have looked pretty promising. But as I said, I've done a video on that, so check that video out there. But what do we do as property investors? Do you stop, do you freeze, do you hang around? What you do is you build an all-weather portfolio. I've said this loads of times, there's a video here where, you can, where I talk more in depth about building an all-weather portfolio. You wanna build a portfolio that's got diverse income and it's multiple streams of income and the portfolio that can support like rates going up to support prices dropping, can support uh, different economic challenges out there. As I said, I'm not gonna go in depth on this now because I've got a free workshop uh, this this Thursday, or if you watch this later, there'll be another one. So if you go in the link in the description below, you can register for a free workshop where we teach you how to build an all weather portfolio that will keep you time in the market. And listen, Warren Buffett says this all the time, time in, time in the market will be time the market, and you just can't time them. So you've got, to, you've got to base your investment decisions on solid fundamentals. Join me on this workshop and we'll give you the solid fundamentals of an all-weather portfolio that will survive you through recessions and help you grow your wealth going forward. But listen, thank you very much if you're still here. Please, if you've not done it already, subscribe to the page, hit the bell icon, uh, and so you get notified when we do these videos. Make sure you get that thumbs up if you've not done it already, it really helps the algorithms. And my wife's living my terms. My mission is to help as many people live in their terms through financial education and through mindset. So if you could please share this out to somebody you think would find it valuable, I'd be really grateful. Thank you everybody for supporting me on this channel. The channel's growing now and getting some momentum. So thank you very much. It's thanks to you. And remember, you don't evolve your ideas. You'll never live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms. Have an amazing day.